yet again, not much of a surprise for Chris. Yep, yeah, and what's going to be interesting in this matchup is Stormbreath Dragon specifically. Brad is quite vulnerable to this card. He, he can counter it with Disable Stroke, and that's all well and good, but his defense against Flyers and creatures in general is Valorous Stance and Dragonlord Ojutai, yep. neither of which offer any defense against Stormbreath Dragon because of protection from white. So if Chris is able to ramp into a fast Stormbreath Dragon, even if Brad has a good hand, he may just die because yep. his deck is pretty vulnerable to Stormbreath Dragon. The Stainful Stroke's going to be working overtime here. Yes, that one's very important for Brad. Some temples to begin around number 11 here between Van Meter and Nelson. Van Meter number seven on our season three leaderboard, Nelson number nine. There is another temple for Chris. See where he wants to scry. For Nelson, he's already qualified for our player championship. Van Meter would like to get back there. He played in it last year. Both these players off to a great start this weekend. Still with a loss to give, too, mm -hmm. as far as top eight is concerned. Nelson going to sacrifice a windswept teeth. Down to 19, there's a basic forest. Though probably, you know, if you're in all that psychological stuff, probably a little bit more riding on it for Brad this time as he's coming off a loss. We just covered it last round against Chris Anderson. And you don't want to start off the day 8-1 and pick up two losses to start things off. Yeah. Police main line, pass the turn back over to Van Meter. Brad looking to get a little aggressive here. And keep in mind, Van Meter's Green Red Dragon Cyclist is a little bit different than what we saw Rill win with last weekend, where Rill was taking a much more aggressive approach. Van Meter is taking a much more mid-range approach. For example, Corsair of Crewfix, a card that Rill did not have in his deck list, Van Meter does. Yeah, the defining differences of the deck, Chris Van Meter has Sylvan Carry added where there's Rattleclaw Mystic in Eric Rill's deck. He has Corsair where there's Rabble Master, and he has Dragon Lord Atarka where there's more red spells. All of these position Chris as more of a mid-range deck. Temple of Plenty here for Nelson. Let's see where this card's going to go. It does have Dramokas Command in hand at this point, so an answer to Corsair is not hard to find. Looks like Nelson's happy enough with the scry. Now here's a command. Put a counter there, make Van Meter sacrifice an enchantment. Or fight, doesn't matter either way. Course is gone. Same difference. Yeah. Here's an attack for four. Van Meter ready to draw a copy of Elvish Mystic. We all know that. Does have a copy of Roast in hand. Copy of Ashclaw Phoenix as well. So we'll see if he wants to go to the skies at this point, or if he just wants to kill the creature and play an Elvish Mystic. I think because Brad's not in a position to threaten, threaten going monstrous next turn with Fleece Main Lion, Chris can afford to cast Ash Cloud Phoenix this turn and then have more flexibility with his mana the following turn. Because he also has Creator's Claws in hand, so it would be nice to get the four power creature in play up front. So next turn he has the option of say, all right, I'll roast this, I'll Creator's Claw something else, maybe I'll play Elvis Mystic after the fact. I mean, you had to take your lumps. You took four last turn, you're looking at taking another four this turn, but... Uh, you know, Brad's deck's not the most aggressive deck in the world. I think Chris can afford to take a couple shots here from Place Main Line to try to develop his board as efficiently as possible. Well, it looks like he's going to go with Ashcloud Phoenix. Haven of the Spirit Dragon was the land. Phoenix is the play. And we're going to head back Nelson's way. He'll untap those three lands and that 4-4 Fleece Main Line. Time for him to take a draw step. He's without blue mana at this point, though I do think he picked up a copy of Manic Influence for the turn. Let's see what's next here for Nelson. Jamoka's command in hand. This deck is a tad light on power when it does not have Dragon Lord Ojutai. Yep. He's just very fair. Yes. He is at risk of getting just generally outclassed as this game progresses. Let's we'll start by playing a forest. Here comes Fleece Mainline. I do have interest, yeah, if Chris was going to block or not. It's a pretty free block, truth be told. There's a counter. Ashcalf needs to be turned face down. Here's another Fleece Mainline. Pass that turn back. Man meter raid to draw. 
See what's next year for Chris. Corsair crew fix the draw. Corsair is not a shabby draw if Chris's plan for this turn was to roast anyway. Because mm -hmm. he has a fifth land in hand. He could Corsair, hope to find an untapped land, and if he fails, still go ahead and uh, cast the roast. If he's playing the land ahead of time, looks like he's got other plans. Yeah, we'll see what those other plans are. He has pulled Critter's Claws forward. Claws right now would be for four. He does use all of his mana. A little surprised by the suit can see here. Yeah, this this was. I, I think that Chris had one plan in mind and then went in another direction. Yeah, because now he ends up missing out on gaining a life and hitting a potential land. Now he wouldn't have hit a land. You see the Thunderbreak region on top of the deck, but now he's actually down a life. Yep. He'll pass the turn back, however. Yeah, Chris ultimately went with the play that I thought he was going to make. Yep. I think he just kind of pumped himself there for a moment. But if last round was any indication, every life point matters. Oh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's only going to cost Chris one life. It's not the end of the world, but we think. Here comes Fleece main line. Chris maybe eyeing up a block here, maybe to tie up Brad's mana for the turn. It's a little bit interesting. I think with the light tolls the way that they are right now, it's already close to attractive enough for Brad to go monstrous. Really, at that point, Chris is only playing around Dragonlord Ojatai being in hand. Sure. I think by committing a block, it forces Brad to go monstrous. There's a morph. Likely to be Den Protector. Brad will pass the turn back over to CVM. We'll draw a copy of Thunderbreak Regent. Top card, Draconic Roar. Combo. Indeed. Now with Dragon in hand. Both players with a morph on the battlefield. I think there's an opportunity here for Chris to get pretty aggressive given the nature of his hand. He has an opportunity here to, I believe, attack with both creatures, play Mystic and Thunderbreak Regent post combat. Even if Brad's morph is Den Protector, I think you're pretty happy to trade your Ashcloud Phoenix that space down for his Den Protector, given the nature of the damage race. You have Crater's Claws and Draconic Roar in hand. Let's see where Chris is going to start. I suppose he could get even more aggressive, which is to play Thunderbreak Regent and then use Crater's Claws on the morph and then attack. Pretty aggressive line. I kind of want to use my fireball to go upstairs. I feel the same way, especially with Draconic Roar coming on the on top there. And also, you know, you, this Elvis Mystic is not getting any better, but the Crater's Claws might. So I like getting the Elvis Mystic out up front. Oh, there's Crater's Claws. And Brad going to use that's a beaten. That's a Valorous Dance. It's going, to tar it's going to trigger. This card is also perhaps an argument for not the, this line of play. Yeah. Dramoka's command would have been similarly bad. Yep. There's a lot of bad things that can happen there because now the Ferocious doesn't happen. Now Den Protector's not dead. Now your Draconic Roar does not have a dragon. Yeah, it's all bad now. It's all bad. There's just too much that has to go right in that instance. Yeah. Also, in, in spots like that, you know, often my guiding line, because Elvis Mystic versus trying to kill his creature feels close to me that turn, is which one of these cards is likely to get better as the game progresses? Which one of these cards is likely to get worse? Elvis Mystic is likely to get worse. Creator's Clause is likely to get better. Sure. The longer we go, which one, you know, kind of which one would you rather draw? Things like that. I guess the, the the argument on Chris's side for that line of play is Brad's about to be able to get back Tramoka's command with the Den Protector. And at that point, Crater's Claws may do very little. Sure. But with Draconic Roar on top of the deck, it feels like you have an easy way to 
bait out the, Dr the Dramokas command should that be the card that Brad gets back. Because he doesn't know that you have Creator's Claws in hand. The only, right. the only one that he knows about is a Draconic Roar. And Draconic Roar looks like this is a big swing in the damage race. If Brad has the, the Dramokas command available, that's probably what ends up happening. Yeah, now Chris is going to lose his entire board to the Dramokas command. Brad's going to fight and make him sacrifice an enchantment. And now you can just see how one side of this game has become. Yeah, and now Chris is drawing Draconic Roar. I mean, I suppose he can just say, I'll get back Thunderbreak Regent with the Haven and, and do it for three, but that's just pretty anemic. I, I think he needs to kill the Fleece Main Line this turn, play the Elvish Mystic, try to get back Thunderbreak Regent next turn and put it into play and hope to go from there. But th this game has gotten pretty rough. Yeah. There is Elvish Mystic. Here's Roar, pass the turn back. Nelson will draw. I believe he's got a copy of a Johnny Steadfast in hand. We know he's got an island. There's an Elvish Mystic. There's an island. Here comes a Johnny Steadfast. Probably a minus here. Yep, minus some, seems great. Yeah, put some counters on. Put Chris to one. And Chris can't crap back into your Johnny because now you have a 2 2 against his 1 1. Manic Influence just got turned off. Yep, this is a, a good sequence here for Brad. And that's going to do things here. Brad Nelson going to win game number one here over Chris Van Meter. Bant Megamorph up a game here over Green Red Dragons. A timely Valorous stands there within the break region. Allows Nelson to get the W there. We take a look at the sideboards. We will start with Van Meter and his Green Red Dragon stack. Two copies of Magma Spray, two copies of Seismic Crusher, two copies of Roast, two copies of Plummet, a Destructive Revelry, a Rending Volley, a Hornet Nest, a Chandra Pyromancer, a Xenagos the Reveler, an Outpost Siege, and a Twin Bolt. Uh, I'm, this is an uh, interesting matchup because there's a lot of cards here that feel like they're all for different matchups that all have some play against Brad's deck. I like the one copy of Rending Volley quite a bit. It's one of the better answers in the format to an attacking Dragon Lord Ojutai. I think that the two copies of Rose can come in here as well. Brad's got enough stuff on the ground. And I think the matchup can be slow enough for Chris to get some mileage out of the Planeswalkers. Other side of things here for Nelson, a disdainful stroke of Jamoka's command of Valor Stance, two else best sons champion, three Master of the Unseen, two Plummets, two Glare of Heresy, and three Hornet Nest. This is an awesome sideboard for the matchup. I think Elspeth Sun's Champion, Plummet, Valorous Stance, Disdainful Stroke, and Dramoka's Command are all huge upgrades for Brad. Those are all really, really useful. All tools. really good cards. Dramoka's Command, Disdainful Stroke, and Valorous Stance are his best tricks in the matchup, and he gets to really max out on those. Two copies of Plummet give Brad more answers to Flyers. Obviously, most importantly, Stormbrush Dragon is now something he has a clean answer to. And Elspeth can be very powerful against these kind of strategies once you stabilize the game. Well, we'll see how both players do sideboard here, but in the meantime, we will talk about the open series trials that we do have for players are looking to get a buy, play math and other things. This is pretty important stuff. Yeah, and a lot of the players that you're watching that are making the deep runs in these tournaments do have a buy as a function of being in the top 32 or top 16 of the leaderboard. These things are very valuable for nine round tournaments where six, two and one, six, three, seven and two make the cut to the second day. On top of the buy, you get an opportunity to room play mats, open series entry vouchers and SEG premium vouchers. Can't forget about that. Sweet plane. I don't, I don't know. What, what is that? Like a kite? What's going on in that? It's artwork? like a dragon kite. A okay. dragon sail? I... Yeah, dragon kites. Yeah. Well, it's Dragon Shark here, so it makes sense. Boom. It's beautiful. StarCityGames.com for more information about that. But all kidding aside, buys are super, super valuable in tournaments like this. Yes. I mean, you are, you're watching two players with some buys right now. Yep. The previous round, you watched some players with some buys. Yep. It helps. It certainly does now, help. These players are very skilled, obviously, and that, that's the, the reason that they have their buys, but the buys are very valuable. Van Meter, the player on your left, someone that we'll find out a little bit more about right now. Of course, former college football player, among other things here for Chris, 32 years old, lives in Roanoke, Virginia, of course, produces content for Star City Games. You've seen his versus videos, I'm sure. One Invitational Top 8, that was of season two, just a couple of weeks ago, oddly enough. Yeah, that, first is, one. that is a curious anomaly of the Open series that now is done. Uh, I think the, the top odd one is Brian Brondewin has not won an Open series event. That, to me, is bizarre. It almost makes no sense. After that one, it's probably Chris Van Meter did not have an Invitational Top 8, but he got that done last a couple weeks ago. Yeah, he does have one now, along with 17 Open Series Top 8s and four wins. As I mentioned, did play college football in Spokane, Washington. A top-rated chess player in grade school. Him and BBD love to do a little chess while they're living in Roanoke. 
And of course, two successful Kickstarters in Beard Power and his BBD versus EVM playmat. He actually had the Beard Power shirt on yesterday while he was doing battle. A master of branding. Indeed. Indeed, very James Harden-esque for Brad Nelson. Six <laughs> James Harden. Yeah, for, that's great. For Brad Nelson, <laughs> uh, truly one of the most successful Magic players I think we've ever seen. Particularly with Standard. Yeah. Uh, I mean, his resume as a deck builder and as a tournament player, beyond reproach at this point. And of course, one of the most celebrated players in Open Series history. A couple Invitational top eights, seven Open Series top eights, two Pro Tour top eights, and 12 GP top eights with a win in DC back in 2010. I'm going to challenge him to a game of golf. Okay. Miniature golf. Uh, a scratch golfer is no joke. There are not a lot of those floating out in the world. Yeah, so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge them to miniature golf. I think I could beat him there. I can't beat I can't beat anyone in real golf. My windmill game is really good. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is, okay. actually. You're, you're really good at the windmill strategy. Oh, huh? I'm really good, That's yeah. good, that's good. Maybe I think I could actually edge him out in Frisbee golf, too. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, yeah. You know Frisbee golf was a thing? Nope. Yeah. Don't know what totally that is. Totally a thing. You, it's like playing golf, but with a Frisbee. Okay. That it's pretty intuitive, it's, I guess. It's literally what it sounds like. Yeah. Yep. And then like you have to frisbee it into like a like a chain on a pole or like a net or something. Mm -hmm. That's how you like that's how you finish instead of like golfing it into a hole. That's what you do. Okay. Pretty fun. It's not a bad way to spend a day, actually. A nice summer day. A little frisbee golf action. I'm surprised you didn't know that. You know that chess boxing is a thing. Because that is that is cool as crap. But you didn't know that <laughs> frisbee golf is a thing. Nope. Frisbee golf is like pretty popular, actually. Yep. Used to play this quite is a where, bit. This is where our worlds are separated. I yeah, suppose. I used to play quite a bit in, Indian, in Indiana when I went to school. That was something to do on the weekends. Ah, the Chris Vameter James Harden parallel is really getting to me now. Soft spoken, mm -hmm. passionate about beards yes. and branding. Well, Correct. Wow. I cannot believe I did not have this revelation myself. That's, That's why I'm here. Insane. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Whoa. I bring things to light. That's all I can do. Call the games and blow your mind. Yeah, that is. That's all I can do. It's a real thing. Both players are going to take a look at their opening Ooh. hands. Chris is going to keep. He's got Elvish Mystic. It's a great place to start. Nelson will begin with the windswept teeth. I think we're going to have an Elvish Mystic on his side as well. Elvish Mystic, a card that some people deem a mox in this format. Mox is, is that a, good? Mox is a big extreme. I think it's a bit of an extreme comparison. Zero but. mana and one mana, those are different. Summoning Cygnus and activating the turn it comes to play, those are a little bit different. Uh, but Mox can't attack. Mox, Mox also can't be shocked. That's true. <laughs> Rugged Highlands here. Chris going to go up to 21. He'll pass the turn back. I would have snapped him off now, of that elf. A first turn. Elvish Mystic in Standard might be more powerful than one first turn Mox in Vintage. If that's the parallel you want to draw, that's actually an argument to have. Not sure I'm ready but for that. In terms of their absolute power level, no, they are not close. Okay. You have to take that up with Ari Lax. There's a Flooded Strand. Nelson down to 18. Basic Planes. I bet a turn one Elvish Mystic on the play in Standard correlates more strongly to winning than a turn one Mox does on the play in Vintage. Maybe. Maybe. That's true. Maybe, maybe, yeah. that, maybe that's the case. It's tough to say. Let's see what's next here for Brad. Look at Tremoka's command. Yeah, that's a spot where Mox Emerald's better. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, just, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's, just, that's just good analysis right Although, there. Although, Brad needed a creature himself to fight. Yep. So I don't know. It's, I guess it's still an open conversation. Draconic Roar, another spot where Mox Emerald is better. That's right, gonna, yep. That's going to take care of the Elvish Mystic now. The problem here for Chris is that he does not have a third land to play, so Nelson will take a draw step. A Temple of Plenty. He's also got a Mana Confluence there in hand. He can play Mana Confluence into Corsair Crucifix if he'd like. We'll see if that's what he wants to do. He'll start with a Temple. Top card going to stay on top. We'll pass the turn back over to Van Meter. Is it land number three here for Chris? It is not. It is Storm Breath Dragon. I love the patience in a slow game here from Brad, not just playing the Corsair into a potential removal spell. Just wait until you have at least one opportunity to use it. He gets rewarded for his patience here, finds an island on top of his deck. Yeah, what's the rush? Yep. Here's a roast. If he's pass under pressure, back. that's different. Yep. But he's not under pressure, so he can take his time. Deathness Raptor the draw. Temple here for Nelson. Take a look at that top card. It's going to stay on top pretty quickly, it appears. And now a Death Miss Raptor. Can Van Meter find land number three? It's going to need it pretty soon here. 
Yeah, the Thunderbreak Regent. A little bit of frustration here from Chris. He does not want to use Rose on a Death Miss Raptor when he has no pressure in play. Not the ideal target. It's a recipe for Den Protector, another Death Miss Raptor blow you out. There is Roast. So with that coarser play from Brad, uh, there was a conversation I had with him that was pretty fascinating. Where he said his trick to being so good at standard is you just memorize the opening turns. If you, you know, as the game progresses, things get fuzzy. You don't know what the board's going to look like. There's a lot of variance. But the first couple turns of the game, they look the same over and over again. If you memorize those patterns, you're going to outplay your opponents in, good sp in, in a lot of spots because you're just going to be better in the first four turns than they are. And that's where a lot of games get determined. And that coarser play is exactly that sort of thing. Yep. Brad just knows, I'm not under pressure, I wait a turn. Doesn't even have to think about it. Because now he's plus a card. Yeah, and that's just a reflection of how much he tests, how much he understands standard. And I, I just thought that that bit of advice that he had was fascinating because I've never heard anyone articulate it that way. Memorize the first couple turns. A morph here from Van Meter. Nelson, you saw him play in Elspeth. He's going to take a point now. He'll play a morph. He'll unmorph Den Protector. He's getting back at that Miss Raptor and a Dramokas Command. I think we're going to see some fighting action now, too. It's a bit of a runaway here. Yeah. Chris just too far behind now. His deck is also not equipped to catch up from the spot. Yeah, Chris yeah he gonna knows it. Chris going to show his opening hand, and that is going to do it. Brad Nelson going to win this match here over Chris Van Meter. Two games to zero. Bant Megamorph going to take down Green Red Dragons. Nelson will move on to 9-2. Van Meter, unfortunately for him, moves down to eight and three. Well, I think that Chris has a tough matchup here with, a, with the exception of Stormbrush Dragon's ability to steal games. Again, Brad's pretty vulnerable to that card, but Chris never found a copy of Stormbrush Dragon. And Dramoka's Command, Valorous Stance, Disdainful Stroke, a smoother curve, uh, th those were all very hard things for Chris to contest in those games. Tough loss. Yep, but that's how these things go. If you look at Brad's two mana spells, they are very well equipped to handle the expensive payoffs in Chris's deck. For sure. Valorous Stance, Disdainful Stroke, Tremoka's Command on Crater's Claws and, and similar red spells.